I can't give you as much value as I would like to by teaching just today. Uh, but I can give you the resources that have had a disproportionately huge impact on me. So the first is uh, Stoicism. And some of you may be familiar with some of the Stoic thinkers, Epictetus, uh, certainly Marcus Aurelius, very well known, uh, Seneca, I'll come back to this, uh, but James Stockdale talks a lot uh, about this a lot. Anyone here, James Stockdale, anybody know that? So as, as I understand it, the highest ranking naval officer uh, in, in a POW camp in Vietnam, uh, I think it was Vietnam, if I correct me if I'm wrong, but has written quite at length about Stoic philosophy. And I think it is one of the best operating systems for high performance and high stress environments ever put down on paper in any respect. Uh, I think Epictetus is a little dry and weird when it gets into the cosmology and whatnot. So I would say get Meditations by Marcus Aurelius and then my personal favorite, Letters uh, from a Stoic. There are different translations. It's in the public domain. You can get it for free as well. But that's Seneca the Younger. And uh, what I'd just like to emphasize there is a, a core concept. And I've written about this in my first book, uh, The 4-Hour Workweek, about fear setting. So I think people here are held back by nebulous fears of, say, failure in entrepreneurship. Uh, what happens if, if I join this startup, I get fired, or the company goes under? What if, what if, what if? And it prevents you from taking steps and experimenting. And I'm not going to call them risks, because I define risk, and I think this might be helpful just for the conversation. Risk is the potential for an irreversible negative outcome. That's risk. Okay? And when you start to look at risk as the potential for an irreversible negative outcome, you begin to handle your fears much more effectively. And I think that just as if you don't define your objective clearly, it's very hard to get there because you need to sort of work backwards. Those fears that you might have, the concerns that you have about whatever transition that you are making, steps you're considering, just do me a favor, get one piece of paper, break it down into three columns, so just two lines. You can do this by pen. I do this about every eight to 12 weeks, just to give you an idea. This is, a, this is sort of a, a quarterly exercise for me at the very least. On the left-hand side, consider all of the things that could go wrong with the move that you're considering. Joining Tesla, uh, joining a smaller startup, going into, who knows, whatever, management consulting. It could be anything. Uh, becoming an Uber driver until you figure things out. Like, what are all the worst things that could happen in detail? And then the second column is how you can minimize the likelihood of those things happening, okay? Kind of line item by line item. And then the last column is what you can do to get back to where you are if it happens. And what you find is when you go through this exercise, you realize that 99% of the time you can get right back to where you are currently with a, f a fairly minimal amount of effort. So the, the big risk, the big scary what if is really not that scary. And you disarm it and then you can take action. So stoicism and fear setting, two quick things. A, a number of books, and then I'm gonna come back to a stoic concept. And again, I know I'm kind of brain dumping quickly, but I value your time and I wanna make sure you get a lot out of this. Um, the first is a, a book called Secrets of Power Negotiating. Author's last name is Dawson. Get the audio if you can get the audio because there is a, there's a lot of subtlety lost on the printed page. Secrets of Power Negotiating. The reason I, I think that's very important, I've been talking to many of your colleagues over the last two days, is that as a number of people have commented on, when you go into the civilian world, you can't just say, do it because I said so. <laughs> it doesn't work very well. And uh, you'll find people who also have uh, prejudice against military for that type of behavior, and they're prepared to be very difficult with you if you come across that way. So you need to learn how to persuade and how to negotiate. You don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. And this is an excellent book with a handful of concepts that also allow you to practice self-defense <laughs> in a way that you probably haven't practiced much in a military capacity. Okay, so secrets of power negotiating, number one. Number two, the 22 immutable laws of marketing. Get the old one with the airline examples and the beer examples and so on. Uh, not the for the internet, because it's already out of date, of course. Uh, get the 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing will teach you a few concepts. Chief among them, it's not enough to be better. In a digital world where there is so much noise, it's a challenge even to get noticed in the first place. You have to be different in some capacity. It's not enough to be better, you have to be different. 